Amazon's share price on Thursday made the company's founder and CEO the world's richest man for a few hours. Jeff Bezos dethroned Microsoft founder Bill Gates for a few hours, as I just mentioned. But his company's second quarter earnings missed Wall Street expectations, which saw him shift back down. Bezos' net worth was estimated to be more than $92 billion at one point. Jeff Glor shows us why experts say we might soon see Bezos back on top again. 22 years ago, Jeff Bezos was selling books out of his garage. Yesterday, his net worth at one point increased $2.4 billion. The company he founded keeps spending, keeps growing, and has become an entrenched part of American life. Welcome! <laughs> For a brief time Thursday, Jeff Bezos was the wealthiest man on the planet. Thank you. Bezos owns about 80 million shares of Amazon, and its stock has been surging helping the 53-year-old add to his personal fortune by a said $24 billion this year alone. You cannot invent and pioneer if you cannot accept failure. It could be a tug of war for a time for the title of the world's richest between Bezos and his Pacific Northwest neighbor, the man atop the rankings, Microsoft founder Bill Gates. I think it's probably inevitable, you know, with Bill Gates giving away a lot of his wealth. Brad Stone is a senior executive editor at Bloomberg News. He says Amazon's impressive growth will likely land Bezos at the top. People expect things from the richest person in the world, to have an active philanthropic life. Jeff Bezos isn't there, so people, I think, are going to be watching very closely at how he will handle the extra scrutiny. Come on. <laughs> what? I mean, you, you, you can oh. afford a better desk than that. It's a symbol. Yeah. of spending money on things that matter to customers and not spending money on things that don't. What's with the Honda? But don't be fooled. In the 18 years since that 60 Minutes interview, Bezos has been busy spending. I sell about a billion dollars a year of Amazon stock, and I use it to invest in Blue Origin. Founding space exploration venture Blue Origin. The reason I finally bought it is because I think it's an important institution. Snapping up the Washington Post in 2013 for a quarter billion dollars. And just last month, agreeing to acquire upscale grocer Whole Foods for nearly 14 billion. The market cap of Amazon has made you the second wealthiest person in the world, second to Bill Gates. Uh, can you imagine at some point in your life uh, pursuing the kind of philanthropy? Well, yeah, if there's Bill... anything left after I finish building Blue Origin. <laughs> <laughs> Bezos did send out a tweet in June asking for philanthropic ideas. It produced a flood of responses. Meanwhile, Amazon has promised to create 100,000 full-time U.S. jobs by next summer, many on the spot at job fairs across the country. Meg? And as we mentioned, on the same day Bezos briefly took the spot as the world's richest man, his company fell a bit short of Wall Street's expectations. So what does this mean for the e-commerce giant going forward? Market Snacks co-founder Nick Martell is here to explain. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Meg. So what does the company make of the quarterly earnings report, though? Yeah, this is fascinating because it's a classic case of shrinkage. On the one hand, you've got these huge sales, a $38 billion in sales, so a 25% jump. But the profits were the smallest they'd been on a quarterly basis in two years, all the way down 77% drop. And isn't spending expected to increase over the second half of the year? So is that a concern for investors? So spending's expected to increase, but just quickly on the profits, uh -huh. I mean, as a comparison, that's about the same amount of profit that Dr. Pepper made last quarter. Same wow. amount of profit that Campbell's Soup made last quarter. So very, very different story from the sales. When it comes to the spending, though, you're absolutely right. There is a huge focus on spending for Amazon right now, and it's going to continue. And it's because investors are cool with it because they know the long-term plan is to take over the world. Well, speaking of taking over the world, yeah. they just launched Spark, the, yes. the social shopping network. That's just one of the many things. There's so many other things in the works. Oh, my God, so much going on. So first of all, they just announced as well they're going to hire 130,000 new employees over the next year. And that's because they're spending 40% more on new distribution centers. And we're not even talking about the drones, which are more of a publicity stunt. But the other key here is the brick and mortar locations. So the irony is that Amazon's been spending time putting brick and mortar stores out of business the last few years. Now they're actually investing in their own. And they're going to have to add people to actually staff those. They're going to have to add products and inventory there. So it's spending across the board. And investors are okay with this because this is all a long-term plan. Yeah, investors are seeing the long-term. And Amazon has a very, very small rate of failure. I mean, the only product 
we could really think of that didn't work out was the Amazon Fire Phone. It's because none of our buddies had it either. <laughs> and how about in terms of making gains in the division of, you know, with the computing business, the yeah. cloud computing business? Tell me about that. Yeah, Amazon Web Services is fascinating because this is super high margin. So unlike what you and I typically use Amazon for, just ordering our e-commerce uh -huh. goods, where you got to pay someone to be at the distribution center, pack it up, send it out, get it to you quickly. With Amazon Web Services, the margins are completely different. So one of the cool details in this earnings report was that Amazon actually makes more money earnings from Amazon Web Services than from all the other divisions combined. So that's a result of just being super, super high margin business there. There's been a lot of talk in the last 24 hours of who's the richest man, and it was right. Jeff Bezos, and now it's back to Bill Gates. How long is this tug of war going to you know, continue? And and why are we paying so much attention to it? Yeah, well, the stocks are really why it's going to be a tug <laughs> of war because Amazon Amazon stock popped yesterday, and that's what caused Bezos to jump ahead for a few minutes. But there's a really funny analogy here because it's not just about Bill Gates versus Jeff Bezos. Uh -huh. It's also about Amazon's web services versus Microsoft's web services, which we just said are now driving income for the company. And those two web services are going to be battling for market share over the next few years as well. So we don't know all the financial details on Azure, which is the Microsoft Web Services mm -hmm. equivalent. Uh, but we do know it's a 100% sales growth in the last quarter. Uh, and that's compared to the 42% sales growth in Amazon. So Amazon's still far and away the leader, but uh -huh. the two are going to still battle head to head over the next few years. They seem very different, as we heard Charlie Rose asking him about philanthropic um, ideas going forward. Yeah. They're, it's black and white there when you're looking at these two. Two very different guys, but I kind of like that idea where Bezos was crowdsourcing some ideas for his <laughs> next uh, philanthropic effort. Nick, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks for coming by.